Alrighty, everyone. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome. How's everyone doing? Are you guys ready? I hope you guys are ready for something special. Because, ladies and gentlemen, today, after three weeks of enjoying one of my favorite games of the last several years. <clears throat> yes, it's true. Today, it is the conclusion of Ghost of Tsushima. So, it's bittersweet for me anyway, because this is a game that I very, very much enjoyed over the last three, like I said, three and a half weeks. It was Friday of three weeks ago when we started it. Um, I took my time with it. I tried to enjoy it as much as I possibly could, doing as much of the content of the game as I could. And here we are, the end game. In fact, I've done all the major side quests. The only thing basically left is to find any remaining fox dens, uh, bamboo cutting uh, mini games, or shrines. D d you know, take over any remaining Mongol bases, and then the final couple story segments, which I I'm to understand is probably about three more story missions left. And of course, the finale is lo lengthy, okay? So, I don't know if it's going to take the whole stream or not. It, it might, with the side content that I'm going to try to do, maybe we will finish, you know, to do a full stream here, uh, or maybe not. Some people have expressed their desire to see me review the game. Um, obviously I can't review it till I beat it, but we'll see how today goes, how time permits. If we end up, you know, ending a little early, then yes, more than likely I will do a live review of the game, much like I did of Last of Us 2. Um, but we have to see what happens here with time, okay? Um, but either way, it seems like unless there's something I'm not aware of in the game that takes a long time, it definitely looks like we're wrapping up Ghost of Tsushima today. <clears throat> and it's definitely bittersweet because... You know, I really, 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 really enjoyed this game for very diff multiple different reasons. Whether it's the graphics, the gameplay, the writing, the characterization, and, and, and you know, loving the characters themselves. Um, the combat, everything is just so good. And with very few criticisms, I really haven't been able to, to, to say much about it to, to improve it. Besides maybe a few issues with the camera and a little bit of cumbersomeness when it comes to swap swapping abilities on the fly but outside of that man the game is great so looking forward to this today um after this we will not have any major new releases until early september but once early september hits uh it's going to be non-stop um new releases every week like through september through october through november new consoles in november so yeah, it's going to be pretty zany and crazy for the next few months once those new releases start. We'll have a couple weeks that'll be a little bit slower, which we're going to talk about in a moment. <clears throat> so, goodbye, Ghost of Tsushima. Very sad that this is the end of it. I really am. I'm almost as sad as when we had to say goodbye to Hungan a few weeks ago. But, at least we're not saying goodbye to Hungan again. If we were, I might not be able to handle it. Anyway. Ghost of Tsushima, concluding today on the first stream. Then later tonight, it's a continuation of Paper Mario and the Origami King. Yes, we are doing it tonight for sure. I was supposed to do it yesterday, but you guys have been asking me for so much uh, so much for Fall Guys that I decided to on-the-fly swap the schedule around, and I played an impromptu Fall Guys session last night. If you did not see it, you can check it out over on DSP Gaming on YouTube where I archived it. And uh, FYI, um, I went overtime, like big overtime. So there's a lot of extra gameplay there if you want to check it out. Um, tonight, Paper Mario continues. And I'm really liking the game. We're currently in the third area, of, uh, or the third world. And I don't know what we're going to do in this third world. Um, because we've been stuck in a cave and we just had the, the, the loss of one of the major party members of the game. And so I'm curious how this is going to continue on. I don't know. We'll find out tonight. All right, I hope you'll join me for that, and I hope that tonight we don't have the issue we had last night. Last night, oh man, we almost had the end of the vest streak last night. Real talk, everybody. It was five minutes before the stream was going to end, and then a few people stepped up and we hit the tip skull, and I was like, oh my god, that was that was the closest. And it's like every, it seems like every few nights on a late stream we get the closest to the tip skull ending. So. Let's see what happens tonight. Hopefully, uh, it won't be as big as a nail-biting cliffhanger tonight as it was last night. Tomorrow, we continue on 
with Near Automata, the B run. I'm currently doing the B side run where you could control 9S, and it is very different from controlling 2B because it is not just about melee combat, it's about hacking. And it's actually fun to do the hacking because it's a little different, and it actually makes boss fights very different. You know, I beat the Simone boss yesterday in such a different manner than the first time around when we played with 2B, and you get more backstory on the characters and things going on in the game. You get to actually figure out, gee, who was Simone and as, as, a, as a robot? How did they become so infatuated with, with, with beauty and looks and stuff? It was pretty interesting. <clears throat> so I'm actually liking the B-side run. I want to do a lot more tomorrow. And what I've heard is, once you get to the second half of the game, the, it totally changes from the A-side run where you played with 2B. So that's cool. And let's see how it goes. Uh, tomorrow should be a fun stream. Uh, tomorrow night, it's the continuation of Fire Emblem Three Houses, which we are firmly in the middle of the second half of the game now. I'm in the middle of a big story fight, having a lot of fun with this because the plot is developing in multiple ways, and uh, looking forward to more of that on Monday night. Tuesday, I am off from streaming, <clears throat> okay? On Wednesday, I'm going to do more Nier Automata on the main gameplay stream, so at that point, we probably will be finishing up our B-side run heading into C, and Wednesday night, it's going to be Fall Guys. All right, another session of Fall Guys. Then on Thursday, we're doing a major stream of Paper Mario the Origami King. All right, four hours. Why are we doing that? Because I want to clear up some nighttime sp uh, streams in order to play Fall Guys. To do that, I means I have to play one of the games that I was going to play on the night streams, which was Paper Mario. So that's why we're doing a major stream of it on Thursday. <clears throat> Thursday night, more... Fire Emblem Three Houses. Friday, more near Automata. At that point, I'm assuming we will be firmly into the C run. Now, I don't know the C, D, and E runs, how long they are, because from what I'm to understand, they are completely different from the A and B runs. It's like totally new content. So I don't know. I don't know how far we'll get, but that'll be Friday. And then Friday night is my weekly throwback Street Fighter session. Okay. Um, Saturday is going to be... If, if we hit it, okay, and it's a big if, because we don't know if we're going to hit it or not. The the 250 vest celebration. Yes. Yes. So, if we continue to hit our vest goals for the week, meaning every stream we hit the tip skull, then the vest celebration will be this coming Saturday, okay? Now, a few things. Had a poppy seed out of my mouth. <laughs> Had to get a poppy seed. It was stuck. I, we've been eating Costco muffins all week for breakfast. And it was an almond poppy muffin. It was really good. Had a poppy seed stuck in my gums. I was like, oh my God, it's bothering me. So I just got it out. Very exciting, as you guys know. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, guys. Um, the 250 vest celebration. Let's talk. What's going to happen during the celebration? First of all, there'll be a Q&A session where we'll just hang out and talk for a bit. There's going to be a live DSP tries it, and I'm not sure what it's going to be. I've got two items on the mind, but you guys may have a, some better ideas. I'm thinking either the mini tacos from Jack in the Box or the grilled cheese burrito from Taco Bell. Let me tell you something. This grilled cheese burrito looks gross. <laughs> I looked it up. It's like a burrito with shredded cheese, cheese sauce, Frito pieces, and rice, and then on top of the burrito, they melt more cheese. Like, oh my god. Ugh. But anyway, um, yeah. So it's going to be either those, or if you guys have a better idea of what I can do for DSP Tries It, please, by all means, share your ideas. Turn into some of the best things we've ever done. The Vest Streak was your idea. All right? So please let me know if there's anything different that I could do for DSP Tries It. Okay? Um, so a live DSP tries it, um, <clears throat> there will be a special reveal during that stream, and you guys want me to play more Fall Guys, so I said fine, if you guys want more Fall Guys, what we'll do is do like a half stream where I talk, we do DSP tries it or whatever, and then the other half will do some Fall Guys, okay, so that's gonna be the, the 250 vest celebration on Saturday coming up, okay. Lies for Soul, I wish we had a Carl's Jr. He says, try a double Western bacon burger from Carl's Jr. I wish we had one. Like I said, there's only one Carl's Jr. I'm aware of out here 
and it's like 45 plus minutes away. And the one time I went there when I first moved here, it was god awful. So there, if there was a one closer, I probably would try Carl's Jr. food, but they don't have one near me. So anyway, <clears throat> um, that'll be Saturday's stream, okay? And then Saturday night, more uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, okay? Sunday, more Near Automata, paired with um, I'm having a brain fart. Well, I was going to say Paper Mario. Yeah, I think it is Paper Mario. Because then Monday, we're starting something new, and it's going to be paired with Fall Guys. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. So that's the deal. Now, here's the thing. I need your feedback on what you want to see me do next, guys. I'm going to ask. I'm going to be asking you all this week. Okay, I am. Uh, oh, my God. Excuse me. Whew. I'm going to be asking you guys all this week what you want next on my streams. Because once Ghost of Tsushima is wrapped up, and once we get through this week's special events with, with the Vest Celebration and all that, I'm going to need new playthroughs. Now, here's the options, all right? Because I looked into the dates of release and everything. We basically have a few options. Option number one would be that I start checking out Samurai Jack. This game comes out this coming Friday. Now, I wouldn't be playing it on Friday. I'd just be starting it up like Monday, okay? I don't know much about Samurai Jack. I never watched the cartoon outside of a few random episodes here or there. So mo you know, the story and the lore would be completely and utterly lost on me, which sucks because I know a lot of people really like Samurai Jack, and you know, for me to be playing the game and not understanding any of the references might be a little bit disappointing, okay? <laughs> but at the, at the same time, if the game is good, right, then you guys probably will like the playthrough. I don't know if the game's going to be any good or not. I don't really know, know anything about the game. Okay, now I'm gonna just assume that Samurai Jack is not gonna be a super long game, right? It's not gonna, it's not a full fledged AAA game. It's not gonna take me weeks to beat. So there's some other options of other things that I can do along the way to, to kind of end the month off. And some of the options are as follows: there is a Control DLC coming out that next week where it's uh, Al Alan Wake. Okay, so that's that's under consideration. The Alan Wake tie-in DLC that crosses the worlds. Um, Battletoads is coming out. Okay. Uh, also, tell me why the new episodic game from Don't Nod, the, the makers of Life is Strange. Now, if I get Game Pass, I believe that I would end up getting at least two of those games under Game Pass. And wouldn't have to pay for them, you know, individually. So it's a possibility I could just get Game Pass and I could play a few of these smaller releases and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Um, so that's a possibility. All right. Or the, here's the other possibility. I play Batman Arkham City Remastered. Okay. This is a game that in the Arkham Trilogy of Games it was the best one in my opinion. When I played it in 2011, it was my second favorite game of the year. Only Skyrim I felt was a better game that year. Um, it... It, uh, I haven't played a Batman game since 2015 with Arkham Knight, so it would be nice to go back and re-experience some of these Arkham games, I feel. Um, so that's the other option, all right? And either one I feel is good. If we do one option, I'm going to be doing a lot of smaller indie titles, and we'll have some variety going on for the end of August. If I do the other one, Batman, I mean, that's definitely a longer game. It's going to take us to the end of August, especially with the amount of content and riddles and stuff in the game. And I know it will be fun. I know I feel either option would be fun. I really do. I feel either option would be fun. Um, and I want your feedback. Okay? So, please give me your feedback over the next few days. I see some people already are giving me their feedback in the stream chat. I appreciate that. And I'm weighing that in my head right now. All right? Please let me know over the course of this week. So, basically, by next weekend, we need to decide. Do you want to see a bunch of smaller games or do you want to see Batman? There's no way I can do both, all right? There's absolutely no way that I could do a playthrough of Batman Arkham City, which is a very lengthy game, and do all this indie stuff. Maybe by the end of the month, if I do wrap up, say, Near Automata, we can squeeze in something, but chances are it's going to be Near Automata, Paper Mario, Fire Emblem, some Fall Guys, you know, along the way, squeezed in, with my weekly Street Fighter stream, and then whatever it is that we choose will be the next thing, whether it's the in, the, the smaller titles or Batman, that's going to be the be the next thing, okay? 
Shao Kahn artist, I completely agree with you. He says, I love Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, but then sadly Arkham Origins was trash. That's right. Because Arkham Origins was made by a different company. All they did is they took the actual game engine from Rocksteady and they ported it to their own game that is subpar. You know, it's the same combat because they literally stole the code. They were allowed to, but the rest of the game sucked. <laughs> I agree with that. So, let's see what people have to say over the course of the week. I would, I definitely appreciate your feedback. Uh, you know, Batman or a bunch of smaller indie titles for the rest of the month. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, last night we hit the subscriber goal for August. <laughs> Yes, we did. It was absolutely awesome. Thank you to those who have subscribed to the channel. Thank you to those who have gifted subs to the channel. Obviously, we got to give a big shout out to Only Iced Coffee, who gifted a ridiculous amount of subs to the channel again this month. He's been doing it all month. Um, well, for the past month and a half, two months almost. Um, thank you. So we hit the goal. What does that mean? It means that you guys are going to be able to vote on the kind of marathon of gaming that you want to see come September. The options are going to be as follows. Either an Indies Marathon, a Rage-a-thon with rage-inducing games, or a classic Mario Marathon featuring Super Mario Brothers 1 and 2 of the Lost Levels. Okay? Now, you can't vote yet. I haven't set it up. In fact, last night we hit the goal, and I was going to set it up, but we, we ended up going overtime to, to reward you guys for allowing me to hit the goal. And then after that, I didn't have time to set anything up. So, at some point today... I hope to have that poll set up where you guys can begin to vote on the type of marathon that you want to see. <clears throat> okay? I'm probably going to let that poll run for roughly a week to a week and a half. And then once we have our results, then you guys are going to be able to nominate games for the type of marathon. Unless it's Mario, in which case you don't need to nominate anything because it's Super Mario 1 and 2. But if we're going to do an Indies marathon or we're going to do a, a rage-inducing marathon, obviously I need you guys to tell me what kind of games you think would fit into those categories. All right. So, it's going to be fun. It is. Now, when is, it, when is this marathon actually going to take place? It's going to be some point in September when there's a little bit of a lull in the gameplay. The good news is, this is not a viewer's choice event. A viewer's choice event guarantees you a full playthrough. This is just a one-day marathon. That means it'll be a stream that starts around 10 in the morning, runs till like 7, 8 at night, and ends up being me playing a ridiculous amount of games in a short period of time. Um, a lot of times what happens with these fun marathons is I get to experience games for the first time that I've never played before, and they end up turning into full-on playthroughs later on, which is really neat when that happens because you're getting exposure to a game where... Uh, uh, oh, 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 I had to stretch, sorry. And yawn and stretch. Getting exposure... To a game and or a franchise that maybe previously I never had any experience in and don't know much about could turn into a future playthrough. This has happened multiple times where I play a marathon like this, an event, and then two, three games in the event end up being something that I like and I end up going back to them at a later date. Okay? So, we'll see what happens with this event. I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited too. Um, I'll let you know when the poll is active. Uh, chances are it'll be today, I hope. Unless something goes wrong and gets me super busy. I want to get this poll going today, later today, so you guys can start voting. Like I said, about a week, we're going to have to vote, and then it's going to change over into uh, nominations if it ends up being a marathon where you guys need to nominate games. Okay? So. No, I didn't see poll results. I did not see poll results. <laughs> there was a poll, and I didn't see the results. So there you go. Hobo Wex says, if Ellen Wake 2 is announced, would I go back and play the first again since it was a complex story? See, that's a tough question. Here's why. Ellen Wake 1, 10 years ago, by the way, it was a 10-year-old game, you know, back in the early 2010s. Um, it was quite a fun game, but it was more fun for the story than for the gameplay. The gameplay mechanics were good for about the first five to six hours, and then... They basically got incredibly repetitive and tedious just using the stupid flashlight to reveal the enemy who's hidden in this like haze of shadow and then being able to shoot the enemy and kill him. And then there were puzzles in the dark and stuff. And basically, by the end of the game, I remember the last like five hours of the game were so tedious and annoying and boring that I actually invited John Rambo over um, so that he would do co-op commentary with me. 
so I wouldn't fall asleep. Because I was like, dude, it was so boring, the end of the game. The end of the story was good. But I wanted, I, you know, I was like actually hating the game by the end of the game. And I invited him over to do commentary with me so I could finish it. <clears throat> okay? So, um, it, the question would be, would I be able to play it and make it fun for you guys? And I think, to some extent, yes, because I haven't played it in 10 years. I probably wouldn't remember a lot of it. And it would definitely be cool to re-experience that story again. Um, but I get the feeling the gameplay would suck. So it would have to be like, we really have to focus it in on it being an interactive stream and, and that regard so that those really boring end areas that slog on with repetitive enemies would not be as tough. Okay. <clears throat> if I had to play the game by myself, I probably wouldn't play it again. Being, just being honest, you know, the whole, when I used to do things offline for playthroughs for YouTube, that game was actually tough to finish. Um, but it was good. Like, the plot was great. When it ended, I was like, damn, that was a good plot. You know, very unique. So. Okay, guys. So, anyway. Um, so that's the deal. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to need your feedback. Next weekend, we're going to start up something different. Whether it's Batman or it's a bunch of smaller titles, it's going to be your choice. I need your feedback over the week, so please give it to me. And this week should be a fun balance between all the stuff I've been doing, plus advancement in Nier Automata, plus a lot of Fall Guys. You're going to see at least three different times I'm going to be playing Fall Guys this week, which is kind of cool. Um, I hope they add new content, by the way. I hope they do add new stuff to me for variety's sake. Um, outside of that, the marathon will happen because we hit the, the sub's goal, and the poll will go live shortly. Good stuff? Okay. Um... So, gaming news, there's not too much to talk about today. There's a few rumors and things going around. Um, one of the rumors, I don't believe. I feel that it's people misinterpreting a situation. Okay? So, last night, this is so confusing. Okay, last night, of all people, Epic Games and Fortnite, okay? Epic Games and Fortnite put out a post publicly stating that there was going to be this new pack, a DC pack, DC Comics, coming out in the fall, and that this 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 was going to feature, like, Joker and other characters from DC Comics as skins in Fortnite, okay? Okay, fair, fair enough, fine. Who knows if by November people are even going to care about Fortnite, because at this point, if you guys haven't noticed, Fortnite's popularity is dropping off sharply in streaming circles. People are just tired of it. And want to do other stuff. And Fall Guys seems to really be the, the virally popular thing this summer. And even though... Look, look, okay. Fortnite is not dead. I don't think Fortnite's going to die overnight. But I, I certainly think that Fortnite is finally losing its momentum as being the top streamed game. Because most other games are starting to finally beat it. And I would say give it till the end of this year. And you're actually going to see, uh, you know, big decreases in the popularity of Fortnite, especially as streamers move on to other games, okay? But, that being said, Fortnite is still a dynamo, and they're going to release this DC Comics pack that's probably going to make them a ton of money yet again, all right? But anyway, the rumor is that they accidentally let slip that the next-gen consoles, including the PlayStation 5, will be out by November 17th, and the reason they let this slip is because it said in this press release about this Fortnite bundle... It basically said, this uh, this bundle will be available in time for the release of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, okay? Now, they're saying, well, if it comes out on November 17th, and they're saying it's in time for the launch of the consoles, that means the consoles will be out by then. I disagree. I think it's that's not the case. I think what they were saying is, this is going to come out before the release of the consoles, so you'll be able to get it in time. When the consoles come out, you'll have you'll be able to have the game. You see what they're saying? They're saying this is a launch title. This, you know, if you got, or if you're gonna play Fortnite on either PS5 or Series X, you're gonna be able to play this pack, this content pack on the console when the console releases as a launch title. I don't think they were saying, oh, hint, hint, the consoles will already be out by the 17th. I think people are they're so they're so into the console wars. They're so into the hype and the fact that we still only like three months away from the release of these consoles don't have a date 
for the release and a, or a price or a pre-order up yet. I think people are just like craving, absolutely craving so much information that they're just making shit up. Uh, you know what I mean? They're just literally trying to find anything to make it up. Okay. So I don't believe it. I think that people are over speculating and they're, they're pretty much out of their minds for information. I don't think that, I don't think Epic Games leaked anything, but that, of course it's all speculation. It's a hundred percent speculation on everyone's part because people are just so fiending for information about the consoles, you know? <laughs> So, so that's the deal with that. Um, the other thing, the other thing, guys, is there is uh, another supposed leak or rumor that The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, the game that was a Wii exclusive 10 years ago, it's actually its 10th anniversary of this game coming out, um... Next year, I want to say. Because didn't it come out in 2011? Yes. So Skyward Sword came out in 2011. So already there was speculation that Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was going to have a re-release. If you actually look at history, um, Twilight Princess got an upgraded HD-esque release 10 years after its original release. And same thing with uh, Wind Waker. Okay, Wind Waker HD it was about 10 years after the original Wind Waker. So people are speculating that Skyward Sword would get a re-release next year. Well, it's now, uh, unless it's an error, it's been confirmed. Amazon UK has put on a placeholder page for Skyward Sword HD on the Switch. So it sounds like Skyward Sword will be getting a re-release. Okay, now. So will I be playing it? I don't know. You know, Skyward Sword, I remember, was the first Zelda game that I had played uh, being a YouTuber. And I have mixed memories about the game. Because I remember the game having great puzzles, great dungeons, fun bosses, really interesting. Uh, really interesting uh, locations and, and environments and... and uh, parts of the map. Like, I remember there was a really cool desert stage where you had to use like the hook shot to get around and stuff. I, I have fond memories of it. I do. At the same time, it was one of the most frustrating games I've played because the motion controls were terrible. Infamously, the motion controls didn't work. You had Miyamoto on stage at E3 trying to show people how the motion controls work to get bombs to work, and they didn't work for him. They weren't working. And he failed and blew himself up. On stage at E3. Then when the actual game came out, the same mechanics were in the game. They hadn't improved them at all. They were just terrible. It was like, they, at that point, if you remember, they were really trying to wedge in the motion control gimmick into every major game that came out on the Wii to say, oh, see, Nintendo's ahead of its time, and this is the, there's the gimmick, and blah, blah, blah. Today, we don't even have motion control. They got rid of it all, right? <laughs> there's not, no one uses motion controls anymore. Um, but... That's what I mean. Like, I remember most of the game was very enjoyable until there was a point that forced you to use motion controls, and then it was, like, frustrating as hell because they had to wedge this into an otherwise great game. Um, I don't know if I would replay it. it we, I guess I would leave that up to you. If there is a Skyward Sword remaster or remake next year on the Switch, I'd probably leave it up to you guys, being that this is a Zelda game I played 10 years ago, and I actually remember liking it a lot. I remember a lot about it. I remember flying around. I remember you fly around on the bird to the different areas in the sky. Um, it was fun. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, ooh, we'll see if I play it or not. It's really up to you guys, I think. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. See, that's correct. That nano mouse says DualShock Four has motion controls. Switch has motion controls, and almost all VR use motion controls. Right. And guess what? Guess how many things do I play with motion control? Zero. Any game with motion control on the Switch, I disable, and the game plays better without it. I don't play any games with motion control on the PlayStation. I haven't played PSVR since uh, Resident Evil 7, which was early 2017. So I think you see my point. When motion control is still implemented, it's wedged in as an added thing that most people just don't give two shits about. Which is hilarious, because 10 years ago, every single console manufacturer was telling us, Motion control, the wave of the future! 
You had the Wii that 100% was motion control. Then you had Sony with the PS Move. You have the Kinect. And it was all trash and it all got thrown away. You know, no one cares about that shit anymore. So. Okay. So that's really it for gaming news today, guys. Um, outside of that, not much else going on besides political stuff. Um, the only the only sad thing today is that Donald Trump's brother passed away. I don't know if you guys heard. His younger brother passed away. So rest in peace to Rob Trump. And that's about all I have to say. I think it's time now to get into shout-outs. We'll have a little bit of fun discussion before we get started here with the conclusion of Ghost of Tsushima. How does that sound? <laughs> okay. Um, so, overnight we had a few contributions that came in. Hold on a second here. Um, Phantom Ghost Robo subscribed for five months overnight. Thank you, Phantom Ghost Robo. Uh, Brohane also resubscribed. Uh, well, subscribed overnight. Thank you, Brohane, for the sub. Um, Golden Colts did an 80 bit cheer earlier. Said, Good riddance to Ghost of Sushi Mom. That's very, very bad. How could you say that? Good riddance? You say good riddance to bad rubbish. Ghost of Sushi Mom is far from bad rubbish. It is the most delicious smorgasbord of gaming goodness I will never say good riddance I, but here's the thing I'm a variety streamer right I play a wide variety of games on a daily basis every day I'm playing so many different kinds of games my audience is vast and varied and different not everyone who likes everything that I do enjoys every game that I play and even an outstanding game like Ghost of Tsushima there have been a group of people who don't like the playthrough because they feel the big open world games like this have too much content, take too long to get through, take up too much time, and end up being very boring by the end. I disagree. I feel that this game has been a great game. If I'm doing open world content with no story, we talk, we interact, we have a good stream that way. If there's a lot of story going on, that's fun for that regard. You know, So I felt the game has been a good balance and the playthrough has been entertaining, but some people disagree. And that's okay. There's not what you could do. People like what they like, right? So, I respect Golden Colts and his ability to criticize Ghost of Sushi Mom and say that, you know, good riddance. That's fine. It's, it's your opinion. You didn't like the game. I thought it was one of the best games I've played in years. So, we'll agree to disagree. How about that? Um, Elon just cheered. He said, if 100 Thieves asked you to join the professional Fall Guys team, would you leave Twitch and do it full time? I do it because Nico is pretty hot. Well, I don't know who the hell you're talking about or what the... Uh, I think 100 Thieves, I thought they were a competitive first-person shooter group. Um, but I would absolutely drop everything I'm doing and immediately join, no matter what. <laughs> I would forego my family and my life here. I would move away. I would move into a gamer house where behind the scenes there would be tons of drama and immature antics that would later be documented five years later and people would be exposed on the internet and canceled for. But I would join a gamer house immediately, and I would start playing only Fall Guys exclusively. In fact, I would get Fall Guys tattoo on my body, and I would dress up exclusively in outfits that are available in Fall Guys. So you'd see me like wearing the 1980s workout outfit as I play Fall Guys. I would get 100% into it. Absolutely. And then in three months when Fall Guys is, you know, old and no one cares about it anymore, I guess I'd be screwed. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Which is funny, because like I said, I really do feel Fortnite is going to lose its popularity within the next six months to year, and no one's really going to care about it anymore. It's going to be played out. And the question is, what's going to happen to all these people now who over the last, like, three years, just, oh, I'm going to be a professional Fortnite player. Like, what are you going to do now? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't put all your eggs in one basket. If there's anything I've learned in the 12 years that I've covered video games pretty much full-time, and I have become a content creator full-time, I have found you can never, never put all your eggs in one basket. Never in my entire career has... I mean, I got to do absolutely 100% into YouTube, 100% into Twitch, 100% into this game or genre. You got to be varied and you got to be flexible. You got to be able to move when the times change and you also got to be able to move on a whims, on a moment's notice if something goes wrong. I mean, just take a look at all the DMCA crap that I've been through in the past couple of months. If I wasn't flexible... To say, okay, let's quick, let's jump to YouTube, but, but you know, 
it, it would be I'd be dead in the water, you know, and that's what I mean. So these people who put all their eggs in one basket under Fortnite, what's gonna happen now that the game's on the decline, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. <clears throat> Texas Gaming says, but you need all your eggs in one basket to win that game on Fall Guys. You're right. That's why that, I hate that game. That egg one sucks. I don't like having all my eggs in one basket. That's why that one's terrible. Okay, it's the worst game. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. So that's the deal. Let's keep going. Only Ice Coffee did a 100-bit cheer. It's the biggest cheer of the day. Let's get that on the uh, leaderboard. <clears throat> He says, Phil, I know you probably don't have time to listen to music given your busy schedule. Wondering if you ever heard of the song The Water Embers by Art of Escapism. Never heard of it. Nope. You want to know what, what my wife and I did last night? So my wife came home from work, and it was late, and we wanted a late night snack. We made a homemade pizza. We had our own pizza dough that we got from the store. We put down sauce, cheese, uh, seasoning, tossed it in the oven quickly, had a nice quick pizza, and then we watched... Nature videos, yes. Underwater, like it was like like tropical fish swimming, uh, sea turtles, sea anemones, shrimp. We were watching nature footage. This is what we did last night. It's very exciting. In reality, when you get old, like me, when you're old, crusty old man like me, this is very good. It's very relaxing and entertaining. Ugh. At this point, I think I would rather watch something like that and just gel out and relax than like watch an actual movie or show. <laughs> it's just more, it's the stuff I've never, I never used to watch this kind of stuff. And seriously, like I used to never relax because I would always be about what's the next thing to watch. I got to watch wrestling. I got to watch this show. I got to watch this movie. And now it's like, we just relax. We, we listen to relaxing music. We watch relaxing things like that. And it's like, wow, you could just uh, unwind, you know? So there you go. I'm 38, not 78. Yeah, like I said, I'm a, I'm a crusty, hideous old man. I keep telling you guys, I got these giant tufts of hair growing out of my ears. All my hairs and my beard and my hair are completely white. My balls dangle down to my knees and clack together like those fucking, uh, the balls in an office. You know, you have like those metal balls that clack off each other, perpetual motion. My balls are dangling like that, cracking off of each other between my knees. I gotta take, you know, I gotta take my Metamucil and my, my Centrum in the morning, Centrum Complete, so I can go to the bathroom eating prunes, drinking prune juice, you know, my teeth, I gotta keep putting my my dentures every day. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> so thank you only iced coffee for the 100-bit cheer. Um, Elon just cheered, he says, it's literally a coda in a box to have something for people to buy for the holidays. The release date makes no makes no difference. The code will be for PSN and Xbox Live for either console. Elon Musk is correct. Anything Fortnite is just a digital code. There's no game being sold here. It's just digital content. If you buy a box, it'll just be a code in the box. He's absolutely correct in that regard. Murdoch. What's going on, Murdoch? He just resubscribed at Tier 3, the highest level tier, which helps me out the most. Thank you for that, Murdoch. 30 months in a row, man. Over two and a half years of support. Thank you very much, Murdoch, for the ongoing support. I very much appreciate that. Timbo Slice cheered. He said, a lot of things are pointing to a November 13th release for Xbox, which is a Friday. Monster Energy leaked some things. Same with a controller that is set to come out on the 6th. I think the 13th for Xbox and 20th for PS5 in time for Black Friday. I was saying, I actually thought that first week of November will be one of them. Because there's zero game releases set for that week, which makes no sense. It's weird. If you look at the game release schedule, it's like every week in September, there's tons of game releases. Every week in October, there's tons of game releases. All of a sudden, first week of November, it's blank. And then it resumes second week of November. You're like, wait a minute. Why is the first week blank? It's obvious. One of the consoles is coming out, and a bunch of games will have release dates, but they're not going to say that till the console announces its release date, you see? So... I, I think one of them will be that first week of August. Excuse me. That was a really bad, uh, incorrect thing I said. One of them will probably be the first week of November. And then the other one will be probably like the third week of November. Which in which, I don't know. I think at this point, whoever goes first, it's the smartest move. Because 
We want to build hype to your console and people want new as quickly as possible. So I would say if Microsoft releases the Xbox Series X first, that's the smart move because already without Halo Infinite, there's not a lot of reason to get the console, but maybe the reason will be because it's the first next-gen console. You see, I think they would actually sell more if they go first. So I'm going to guess Xbox Series X the first week. Um, the first week of November. And then I think PS5 will come out around the third week. Okay? All right. That's my guess. Okay. Um, continuing on. VG Stuffed did a 50-bit cheer. And he says, Nier is only a C run. D and E runs are just different endings you can get by reloading a checkpoint at the end of C since you just make a big choice at the end of the run. You only need to do the C run, then you can reload the last checkpoint to see D and E, so you only need three playthroughs, not five. I just saved you a few hours. Can I be VIP? No. No, you cannot be. Thank you for that info. Again, I don't, I don't know anything about it. So once we get there, I'm sure people will explain to me how it's done because people are dying to see all the different runs, right? So, all right, fair enough. We'll see. Like I said, with the schedule for this coming week, okay, um, likely I will finish the B run by the mid to end of this week, and the next weekend I'll start the C run, and then maybe within another week I'll finish the C run. If that is the case and we finish Nier Automata before the end of August, I may still have opportunity to check out some of those other smaller games, regardless of the fact that if I choose to do Batman or the other games, maybe I'll have opportunity to check out some of those other games anyway, if time permits. So we'll see. <clears throat> Spartan King. Spartan King just tipped me a dollar to become the first tipper of the day. I appreciate that very much, Spartan King, because there's no tips so far. Thank you for that. Let's get you on the leaderboard. That is not Spartan. What was that? Spartan King says, I predict goes to be the runaway favorite for Game of the Year 2020. I don't know. Here, It depends on what you mean. If you mean, like, actual gamers, you may be correct. Like, overall, so far this year, it seems like there's a few stand-ins. Like, I would say, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, uh, Doom Eternal are, like, the big three that everyone is talking about <clears throat> so far this year as games that are in everyone's mind as, like, Game of the Year. I guess Persona 5 Royal is also in the talk, but, I mean, it's an older game that we just got re-released with extra content. Um, and then by the end of the year, of course, we're going to have games like Marvel's Avengers, the Tony Hawk Collection, uh, Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, among others that are going to be in the running as well. Um, right now, definitely Ghost of Tsushima is my favorite game of the year, but we got a lot more coming up by the end of the year, okay? Now, if you're talking the Game Awards... All right. I am I would think the Game Awards is honestly going to really heavily favor Last of Us 2, even though the game is bad, because all the journalists fucking sucked its ass. They all literally spread the cheeks of Naughty Dog and sucked the turds right out of their ass because they really wanted this agenda-pushing, very different artistic game to be recognized, when in reality, that's not what gamers want. The common gamer didn't want that. They just wanted a good game that they didn't get. All right? So while the, the, you know, the journalists are so busy with turds in their mouths, the rest of gamers have moved on and played many other games like Ghost of Tsushima and are loving it. So <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen by the end of this year, but I get the feeling you're going to see stupid-ass Last of Us 2 probably winning Game of the Year. Even, even if Cyberpunk is amazing and Cyberpunk blows us away, I still think that they're going to say Last of Us 2 is Game of the Year. I, I mean... How can you have so many journalists give it 10 out of 10 and not say it's Game of the Year when guess who votes on the Game Awards? Journalists. Not actual gamers. Gaming journalists vote on the fucking Game of the Year Awards. So, you know what's going to happen. Just prepare for it. Prepare to shit all over the Game Awards at the end of this year. Okay? They had their asses sucked all year. Now prepare to load your ass for a nice anal evacuation during the Game of the Year Awards. All right, Dollbath cheered and said vg stuff can be vip can i be vip no no one can be vip there's no such thing jad fx just hit me ten dollars thank you very much jad fx that is the biggest tip of the day let's get you up on the leaderboard <clears throat> here we 
go. Okay, so JadFX says, Sup, I hope the finale of uh, Ghost of Tsushima is good for you. Can you recap what big games you're going to commit to until new consoles? Sure. Hold on a second. I'll grab my list. Oh. All right. So here's what I'm committing to between now and the release of the new consoles. Um, definitely the Tony Hawk collection. Uh, Avengers is a maybe, but a strong maybe. I'm thinking leaning towards doing it. The Outer Worlds DLC, Peril on Gorgon, WWE 2K Battlegrounds, The Mafia Definitive Edition re-release, Crash Bandicoot 4, Star Wars Squadrons, um, Watch Dogs Legion, um, The Dark Pictures Little Hope, um, and Yakuza 7, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Cyberpunk. I'm committing to all of that. And that's going to be a crazy few months. Like, that's all September, October, November. Now, there's actually more releases in October that I'm not committing to, but if I need some time fillers, there'll be a few things there. And then, of course, when the new consoles come out, that also is going to be crazy, crazy busy. So, it's going to be a crazy few months coming up with new releases. Like, I'm very excited. At the same time, understand, we're going to be, like, super bo booked every day. It's going to be new release, new release, new release. We're not going to have time for downtime stuff, which is why I'm happy now to be able to do stuff like Fall Guys, and I'm trying to get as far as I can in Fire Emblem, and I'm trying to play Mario, because I know... Once these new releases hit, it's going to be very, very busy. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, Spartan King to me another dollar and says, never mind, it's going to be Fall Guys 100%. He thinks Fall Guys is going to win Game of the Year. I don't think so. I think what, what they do at the Game Awards is they give other awards that aren't Game of the Year, and I think Fall Guys will definitely win an award of some sort. Timbo just cheered. He says, it sounds like Warzone will be transformed to theme of Call of Duty Cold War in the 1960s era. We play it again if that happens when new Call of Duty comes out. Um, yeah, if Warzone got redesigned and improved, I would give it another shot. Yes. Well, you know what's funny? So, you guys know how harshly I criticized Modern Warfare and then Warzone, and I quit both and said I didn't want to play it anymore. You know, I follow social media circles of different games. The Call of Duty players are fucking pissed they hate modern warfare and they hate warzone if you actually like look around the pro gamer circles they've completely turned on uh on activision and and the call of duty developers this year they completely said this game sucks it was funny there's actually people who are like man these pro Call of Duty players would actually be better and have more popularity and make more money if they stopped playing the game competitively and went on and did other stuff, right? That's just, and, and you know, normally, normally, Call of Duty, these guys are ball suckers. They will kiss the game's butt for the whole year until the new one releases before they'll say anything negative about it because they want to ride that popularity of the game and keep it pertinent. They completely abandoned both Modern Warfare and Warzone, that everyone shits on them and says that they're terrible and they want something new. That's why this year there's been such such a delay in the announcement of the new Call of Duty and everyone's angry. They're like, what the fuck are they waiting for? Announce the new one so we can start talking about it and stop talking about the old shitty one. That's pretty funny. This is actually the first year I've seen that attitude from the actual professional community. That's the first time I've seen that attitude. Um, Timbo Slice cheered again. He said, would you wait to play Assassin's Creed and Cyberpunk on next gen if PS5 is not out yet? Or would you buy Xbox to play them on next gen before PS5 is out? Um, I don't know. I, it, this is all speculation. Like I've told you guys, if the vestry continues, if I keep making the amount of money I'm making right now, things are going to look good for me for the rest of the year. As long as nothing else happens, I should knock on wood. As long as nothing else crazy and unexpected happens, which I hope wouldn't, I can't imagine what it would be. But then again, things always bite me in the ass, right? So as long as nothing crazy happens, it's looking like by the end of this year, I should be able to afford one console, if not both. We'll see. Um, and possibly even by the end of this year, make some improvements to the business. Like maybe get rid of this stupid couch, get a new chair, get a, a green screen set up, maybe get a new webcam. You know, I'm, all these things I'm debating if I can afford it. Okay, so I, again, I don't want to jump the gun. I still haven't heard from the government on my back taxes. And according to my accountant, he's basically saying they're going to take forever. They could take months and months because they're so backlogged because of the coronavirus. We may not hear from them until like the fall on this shit, which is so stupid, right? <clears throat> so 
yeah, there's all so, so many hypotheses. If <clears throat> Xbox Series X comes out first week of November, but then Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed are coming out in the middle of November, and the PlayStation 5 doesn't come out till late November, will you buy those games for the Xbox Series X? I mean, if, yes, I guess. You know, like, I don't even know how things are going to work on the Xbox Series X because I don't even know how headphones work. I guess they're saying you plug your your headphones into the headphone jack of the controller and the, it will simulate surround sound so you don't need to buy headphones for the console or something like that. I don't know. Um, we don't. There's, there's so much speculation at this point. In that crazy hypothetical, then yes, I would probably do that, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Um... Now Tim Butchard again. He says, they're starting to slowly reveal the next Call of Duty since Friday every day of noon. They release hints and give codes to unlock bunkers in Warzone to reveal more hints. Tons of YouTubers are covering it. They play tapes showing videos of events that happened in the Cold War era. Well, there you go. I think we all know it's going to be Cold War style game, right? Okay. All right, guys. Um, Let's quickly do shout outs. For the top cheers of the week and the top sub-gifters of the week. Reminder, guys, today is Sunday. And according to Twitch rules, Monday is the first day of a new streaming week. That means these leaderboards I'm about to read will actually officially reset overnight and go to zero. So if you want to, you know, show as one of the top cheerers or top subscription gifters of the week, today would be the day to do it because it will reset to zero as of tomorrow. Okay? So thank you to those who cheered this week. In 10th place, we've got uh, Slepia. In ninth place, um, Golden Colts. In eighth place, it's actually a tie for seventh between Woodward, the Fat Cow, and Spartan King. Sixth place is Lice for Soul. Fifth place, Timbo Slice. Fourth place, Eternal Napalm. Third place, Mature Adult. Second place, Only Ice Coffee. And in first place for cheering this week, Shadow the Hedgehog. Thank you to those who've gifted subs this week, including Spartan King, El Nice Gaio, and Gorilla X Pimp, who each gifted a single sub. Motherfucker Jones and Lunabot each gifted 10 subscriptions to the channel. And Only Ice Coffee gifted 30 subs to the channel this week. Thank you very much, Only Ice Coffee, for the ongoing support. Okay. Um, Dalboth cheered. He says, do you think any of the next-gen consoles are going to make streaming directly from the console easier and more reli reliable? I, they very well might. <clears throat> but ultimately, the best way to stream is to capture directly with a video device, video capture device, and be able to do whatever you want with that footage directly. You know what I mean? Like, it's nice that you can stream straight from the consoles, and we all debated, last gen, we debated, would having streaming capabilities from your PS4 or your Xbox One change the face of streaming? And the answer is, did it change it? I mean, it did somewhat. Basically, anyone can just turn on a console and stream now. Did it actually change the face of professional doing it professionally no how many people do you know that for a living they stream and they stream directly from their ps4 or xbox one not a lot right most people they take that video feed they mess with it in, in some kind of a third party program like me i use obs so i can have these nice overlays pop-ups and things it's much better to be able to control your whole setup on the fly than relying on software built into your console that's very limited okay so for me, um, I don't believe that. Um, I think... My nose is itching me, by the way. I think... Um, I think that it's it's better to always control it on a PC. You know, that's my take. You can disagree with me and that's okay. But I, I don't think that having even more options built into the console is going to be that big of a deal. Okay? Um... Timbo Slice says the surround cell thing's already on Xbox One and it works well. Well, I wouldn't know. You know, I'm still using the optical, uh, the optical output on my Xbox One, so I get surround sound. I've never tried just plugging it into the controller and seeing if it works or not. Hmm. Spartan King tipped the dollar, said there was a 66 gigabyte update for Modern Warfare for Xbox recently. The update size is a rod of control for, re and, and that reason I deleted the game long ago. Yeah, there's some kind of a weird bug or a way that they roll out updates on the Xbox One. Um, is incredibly frustrating. Apparently, if there's an update, they need to re you need to re-download the entire like game, which is obviously stupid. Why can't you just patch it? Why do I have to download the whole fucking game again? And it's a major problem on Xbox One. They didn't have that problem on the PlayStation Four. It just allowed you to download the patch. And on PC, it just allows you to download the patch. 
for some reason, you had to redownload the whole goddamn game on Xbox One. It's really stupid. So, <laughs> I don't know. J, crucial, and then forward slash S has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Jay, for the sub. I'm just going to call you Jay because I have no idea how, why there's a forward slash S in your name. That's confusing. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Um, really quick, let's, up, let's update everything. So, we're currently at 826 subs. We went down to horrible, horrible events that we've lost subs today. And it's actually put me in such a bad mood. I've decided to cancel the stream. We're not going to stream today. F forget the end of Ghost of Tsushima. I don't care. I can't believe I lost subs on the pre-stream. I'm just so incensed at this. I'm out of here, guys. All right, see you later. Have a good night. Just kidding. Who cares? <laughs> Went down a couple subs. Who cares? Not a big deal. Um, Moon Walkman just resubscribed for 26 months, by the way. Thank you, Moon Walkman. I appreciate that. Uh, Only Ice Coffee is the current top cheerer with 100-bit cheer. Jad FX is the top tipper with a $10 tip, and we're at $13 in tips so far today. All right, here's what we'll do. Let's take a very brief break. I'm going to go use the restroom. And then we're going to come back and we're going to finish up Ghost of Tsushima. Like I said, the first thing we'll do is probably focus in on whatever side content I can find um, and try to do it. And then uh, just continue with the story. I believe people said there's like maybe three story missions left. And each one will take anywhere between 20 minutes to like a half an hour. So we don't have a hell of a lot left in the game. But I want to try to do you know as much as I can. Maybe even I don't know what, what it takes to get the Platinum. But I'd like to try to get as much as I can before I finish the game. So, we'll see how it goes. Alright? Alright, let's take a quick break. I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. See you then.